at Twitter's San Francisco headquarters. Even the folks who didn't make millions in this past week's IPO are treated like they did. They get all the typically enviable dot-com company goodies, a flexible work environment, free gourmet meals, and the knowledge that they've helped change the way the world communicates. First of all, everybody can sit down. <laughs> it's much easier to tweet from a seated position. President Obama tweets, so does the Pope, CBS News, and just about every celebrity you can name. In case you don't tweet, it works something like this. On Twitter, users can send messages through a global online network, any message, as long as it's 140 characters or less, like this one. In two seconds, your tweet goes out to everyone who signed up to see it, and they can send it on or retweet to all of their users, and so on until your tweet makes its way around the Twitter network and the world to be seen or answered by anyone. Anyone. There we go. Michael Sippy awesome. is Twitter's product VP. Done. Tweet. So with that there just went out to how that many people? That just went people? out to 17,800 followers. Have you personally ever been surprised by the way that someone's used Twitter? I'm always surprised to see people that are talking with one another that you never expect to be talking with one another. Like? So Drake, Canadian rapper, drops a tweet that says, the first millions, the hardest. And T. Boone Pickens, the Texas oil magnate, replies, the first billion, it's a heck of a lot harder. Are you sure the, it was the real it was people? was the two real people having a conversation on Twitter. That's amazing. For you, is it all about solving problems? Yeah. Jack Dorsey co-founded Twitter in 2006, when he and a few pals started sending messages to each other. Your original tweets were a lot about like what you were eating for lunch. <laughs> yes, they, they were, and my mom really appreciated that. She knew, <laughs> I was, uh, she knew I was eating, and she knew I was alive. Before long, Twitter took off, and so did Dorsey's profile, though he's been accused of taking too much credit for what was really a group invention. What's your version of the creation? <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's so many, yeah, I mean, there's so many different stories that it's not really the most important thing anymore. So would you say now I founded Twitter or we founded Twitter? <laughs> it, it's, it's always been we. It's always been we. Yes. Was that frustrating to you, though, to hear other people have different versions of the Twitter creation? It's, I mean, it's not, it's not surprising. If we focus too much on that, we're not going to move forward. The past is the past. The past is the past. Stories will be written. Whatever the story, there's still a lot of room for growth. In a CBS News poll, only 16% of American adults age 18 and over say they use Twitter. There are a lot of people out there who I think are still skeptical, who still think, who cares about yeah. somebody telling me what they ate for lunch? And it's, of course, not at all about that. There are always going to be people who are doing that, who are just, you know, random, here's my dinner. Lance Ulanoff is editor-in-chief of the online social media blog, Mashable. The moments that matter in Twitter's lifespan are when we were told about things that are happening in the real world, and that has sort of solidified its position as a powerful news delivery service. For, for average people, people on the ground. Or on the water. For example, remember the plane that bellied into the Hudson in 2009? Some of the first images were from a guy tweeting from a ferry boat. And the first pictures of the Asiana crash in San Francisco this year were tweeted by the passengers themselves. Is that your lunch? Is that inconsequential information? No, that's sort of life-changing information. Of course, Twitter had its own life-changing moment this past week. The company's stock price soared 73% in the first day of trading, but slid 7% the next day. From Wall Street to Twitter's headquarters on San Francisco's Market Street, all eyes are on the numbers. And the numbers are staggering. According to Twitter, the company has over 230 million users who send around a half a billion tweets every 24 hours. Last year, revenue shot up 198% to around $300 million. But that brings up an equally staggering number. Twitter's net profit so far is zero. The company says it'll turn that around by selling more ads called sponsored or promoted tweets like this one. Twitter makes money through ads. As the ads pile up, does that cheapen the experience? I think it makes it better. You know, you're giving a, a brand uh, or an organization an opportunity to increase the number of people who might see their content, to see their message. It's good for the advertiser, but what about for the 
person on Twitter who's reading all these ads? Well, they're, they're contextual, you know, so you see, you see an ad, uh, you see a, a, a promoted tweet within the stream, and it feels like it belongs there. It feels like it's part of the conversation. And it's an open conversation, which means companies can sometimes get their message across without paying, like this Oreo tweet during last year's Super Bowl blackout. Boom, they put that out there, and it explodes virally, and Twitter doesn't really have anything to do with it. They didn't pay for advertising. Right, so that's the thing. You know, Twitter's a completely open environment. It's not like television where, you know, the average user couldn't suddenly show up on TV talking about something, or some small company couldn't just show up and say, hey, by the way, check this thing out. But Twitter is like that. But as innovative as Twitter may be, the company's drawn fire for having an all-male board of directors. Vijay Gotti is general counsel. In the recent financial filing, you were the only female in the list of top Twitter executives. Does that concern you? It really doesn't. That is one snapshot of who we are as a company, but it certainly does not tell the whole story. I'm sure that will change. I'm sure it will. Did people tweet to you, to you directly? Did they use Twitter to say, hey, why aren't there more women in Twitter? Absolutely. I got a lot of feedback, and I got a lot of great suggestions of people who wanted to come here. So it's, it was an interesting dialogue, and it's certainly something that, that we take very seriously, and it's very important to us. Another change crucial to Twitter's survival, growing the number of people who use it. Right now, Facebook has four times as many, but insiders like Jack Dorsey have high expectations. Where do you see Twitter 10 years from now? We want to reach every single person on the planet. That's a lofty goal. I think it has the potential to do so. I think it- Seriously? Yeah, it provides true utility and it does give you a sense of what's happening in the world. So. I, I do, I do believe it has the potential to, to reach those heights. Okay, that could be overly optimistic, but maybe by giving us a new way to talk about a rapidly changing world, Twitter has found a permanent place in it.